Greetings and welcome to the Mount Rushmore Podcast. My name is Jeff, and I'm joined, as usual, by my good buddy Richard. Hello. And Michael is forthwith, but we have in the house wait, a very wait. good... What does that mean? That means henceforth, forthwith, you know, here to you've, lost, you've totally lost I'm me, in Jeff. year one of law school, so I'm just trying to use all these <laughs> <laughs> courtroom things. May I approach the bench? Okay, may I leave the bench, please? All right, let's sidebar. Uh, Michael will be here very soon, but we have in our midst a serial expert. He's been dining on cereal his entire, entire life, and he's been collecting cereal premiums for quite some time, and he's a big fan of cereal, and he's uh, right here, and his name is... Introduce yourself, sir. I'm Jeff Myrie. Woo! Jeff Myrie is here, and our topic is the Mount Rushmore of cereal mascots. I chose this topic. Yes, you did. I did. And for me, the characters who embodied the uh, boxes of the um, cereal sugary confections that I dined on throughout my youth and adulthood were always very fascinating to me because they weren't uh, animated. Sometimes they were animated, yet they weren't Disney or Warner Brothers or right. Rocky and Bullwinkle. Sometimes they were um, uh, enigmatic characters such as sea captains and kings, and they, they had status, they had authority. <laughs> there was something about watching Saturday morning cartoons where suddenly the commercials were as entertaining yeah. or d- as, as designed to be as entertaining as the actual show you were watching. And depending on yeah. which show you were watching, sometimes it was more entertaining. A little more entertaining. And no other food was necessarily like that. You know, they didn't love like, like uh, ham, Mr. Ham. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, some were cooler than others and some were even cooler or better than the cereal that they uh, represented. But. Yeah, we should be clear. We If you go back through the archives, we do have an episode on cereals. Yeah. The Mount Rushmore of cereals, or yeah. I think it's, I can't remember if it's Saturday morning cereals or just cereals in general. This is not talking about the quality of the cereal. No. This I, is simply mascot. Yeah. Uh, it, related. Yeah. I, and I should, I let you know that I notified Jeff that he was not even talking to actual cereal aficionados because you guys don't eat cereal the right way. That's true. Well, I mean, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> you, oh, let's say you eat cereal only. You do not oh, put it an in milk. It's unorthodox, <laughs> an unorthodox, unorthodox <laughs> manner of, of cereal consumption. So if any uh, if you ever look at the cover of a, a, a cereal bowl or box, they always show the serving suggestion of pouring cereal into a bowl and pouring a um, lactic uh, conf- lactic liquid on look it. they it's may su- milk. they may suggest milk people suggest a lot of things to me <laughs> richard you've had too much to drink don't drive <laughs> uh, listen cereal and milk is the, the maybe the simplest recipe for the food that i make the best and you guys don't even eat it with milk so sorry so, Jeff. Okay, it's not but, nothing personal against you but again it's not about the cereal it's about the mascot do you dunk your mascots in milk no i don't okay <laughs> Okay, so since he is the guest, I would like to invite Mr. Myrie to give his first uh, choice for the Mount Rushmore of cereal mascots. Oh, uh, that would be Boo Berry. Boo Berry, okay. uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, monster mascots. Okay, Correct. let us know your relationship with Boo Berry. Uh, I would say that my interest in um, near obsession with Boo Berry started uh, eighth birthday. Um, Sitting down to, I think it was 1975, sitting down to uh, a fresh box of Boo Berry. Uh, and I, I so desperately wanted a digital watch. You know, the digital watches that have kind of the red uh, oh, LED yeah. screen. Yeah, sure. I so desperately wanted those, one of those for my birthday. And um, sitting down to a fresh box of Boo Berry that I didn't pick out. It was picked out for me by my mom. Uh-huh. And... Uh, and I didn't even see the wristwatch that was sitting next to the box of cereal because I was so fascinated and and wondering what kind of prize was inside that box. Wow! Of yeah. Wow! So imprinted on me. It was so exciting. The what? What is it? Uh, what are the qualities of uh, Boo Booberry? Uh, was one of the monster guys. Right. And you have also a fascination with Universal monsters and things like that too. That is correct. Which came first? Uh, it or? would. I, w- I think it would have to be uh, Boo Berry. Okay. Yeah, the the monster cereals came yeah. before you even liked uh, Dracula. I really didn't have access to you know. We didn't have any creature features uh, where I grew up. I grew up in a rural community, um, 
So I was so hungry for literally, literally <laughs> and, hungry, yeah. and figuratively um, for, you know, anything that was spooky or uh, scary. Um, you know, it was Saturday morning cartoons, but like I never even saw Frankenstein until, you know, I was in my teens. Oh, is that right? Yeah. What is your, could you describe briefly, I know this, but uh, for the court, um, the extent to which you've collected Booberry cereal premiums and, and you have embraced Booberry as a character? Well, I can honestly say that I have everything that General Mills produced, uh, premium, in packs, and uh, mail-away stuff. So I think I have everything. Everything. Yeah. So if there's something I don't have, I, I, I'm i unaware of what that okay. is. You went to the General Mills uh, archives. Is that right? Like, yeah. Four years ago, oh. I went to uh, uh, the archives with my buddy, Dallas Pogue, who I think uh, still runs a website called Serial Bits. Um, he's interested in all serials. I focus mostly on the monsters and even more specifically on Booberry. But we went there about four years ago and they, it was like, you know, it was like they were Willy Wonka. Yeah. And, uh, we, you know, they, they gave us the tour. They showed us the, uh, you know, the paintings of Betty Crocker and the original artwork for Bruce Jenner. And then they said, what do you want to see next? And I said, uh, anything Booberry. And they, pulled out a file box of Booberry yeah. cereal boxes. In fact, every one from wow. the seventies. Oh, wow. And, um, and they just let me paw through those, you know? Yeah. So it was just amazing. And then they said, what else do you want to see? And I said, uh, at the time I didn't have the Holy grail of collectibles, Booberry collectibles, which was a beach towel. Yeah. Ooh. Smashing uh, through the door. <laughs> yeah, look who finally <laughs> decided to show up. You know what? I didn't. Uh, I, uh, I didn't have my big bowl full of like sugar frosted uh, cocoa bombs this morning, and well, I you could, couldn't get out of bed. Since we eat them dry, we could have just. Yeah. You could have just had them in the car. Oh, what? 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 Is that honey? Honeycomb? How to go? Those calories give you oh. energy. Howdy. So, hey, so we we're talking booberry. Uh huh. Yeah. So let's let. Let's discuss this. Uh huh. Does the Booberry guy look really stoned? I he think he have, looks really he stoned. Have, he does have sleepy eyes. Yeah. I does. mean, all the monsters, though, they're all, they've all been asleep is it for like, hundreds of years. Is right? it like post sugar crush, crash, you think? <laughs> is that what's happening? Is that just his I'm a ghost? Well, I think Peter Lorre is uh, oh. what Booberry is based right. after. And uh, he had the sleepy eyes. Oh, mm. okay. Maybe Peter Lorre was stoned all the time. Oh, okay. That's Bella Lugosi, and that wasn't pot by the way that was <laughs> formaldehyde or whatever the hell he was shooting up what was the who was the voice of booberry in do, who was it doing a peter Lorre impersonation was it paul freeze yes was it? it was mm-hmm. paul freeze okay i didn't know that i happened to have that just happened oh, to have right. this up was happened to look that up while, oh. while we were talking so well, also the voice I, of I the pillsbury something. doughboy oh well, that's right and uh santa claus in the frosty the oh, snowman yeah. cartoon so uh, what is Booberry wearing on his head that seems to be is that a like a boater or it looks like a hot dog or something like that? Is that a fez? It's a fez. Is, no, he, is he a murdered it's shriner? A bowler. I think it's, it's a bowler, a bowler. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, we came out swinging with Booberry. Uh Richard and Michael was. Oh, is that first? our first? No, that was uh, uh, that was our guest going our guest first. Oh, okay. So our first okay. yeah. is Sonny the Cuckoo Bird. Yes. Okay. Who is in fact Cuckoo. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. For Cocoa Puffs. Yeah. I think it was Pat McCormick. Was he the voice of... Uh, At one time, I believe he may have been. Um, This is one in a long line of mascot characters who appear to have some addiction problems. (laughs) (laughs) And in this case, um, Sonny seems aware of his addiction and is doing his best to try to avoid situations yeah. where he may come into contact with his his, his <laughs> narcotic of choice, which is Cocoa Puffs. Sonny was and a- these damn kids yeah. keep parading that, that cereal around him. and co- They're enablers <laughs> is what they are. Do you think Sonny Corleone was based on Sonny the Cuckoo Bird? Because he seemed like he was a man of appetites. Well, I remember this. I remember that the one the one advertising campaign where the Cuckoo Bird got shot up in a toll yeah, booth. Yeah, I, that was a little booth. disturbing <laughs> as a kid. We, when Sonny took out all of his all of his enemies at the end of that one commercial, yeah. he took out the leprechaun <laughs> and he took out Tony the Tiger yeah. lying yeah. on the massage table. That wasn't good. That wasn't good. Well, Tony's so active that he did yeah. need that massage. <laughs> right. Got shot in the yeah. eye. 
why is the is it because of his uh, dynamic personality? Is there certain? I think he's. I think he's so representative of what it feels like to like want more yeah. sugar and more chocolate. Yeah. Um, he just. He's just. He's crazy for it. I know that my kid. He's two and a half, and like, if he gets a little bit of a sugary cereal, he just wants. He just wants more and more of it. Yeah. So I think that there's like an yeah an addictive. Uh, they definitely got the they they nailed what it's like to have a toddler or a younger kid <laughs> who is demanding sugary uh, cereal. Fortunately, neither of my kids really got into the sugary cereals, mm-hmm. so I never really had. We never we just don't keep them around anymore. So it's not really something that I've had to deal with. I just remember being a kid. And what that felt like, yeah. and it Sonny was get, crazy. Did Sonny get injured at the end of each uh, commercial, or was he vanquished at the end of each commercial? No, at the or? end of each commercial, I believe that he wound up like breaking down and going cuckoo for the Cocoa Puffs and starting to like just slam them because it was always <laughs> like he was trying to concentrate take on out a razor blade and cut him up in a line. Yeah, his little dollar bill. And if I remember correctly, and I, I, I actually I think I do. They. He the 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 premise of most of the commercials was Sonny was trying to do something normal, yeah, that would take his mind off of cocoa puffs, mm. and then the kids would show up with their big bowls of cocoa puffs and start sort of tempting him, and he'd slowly start to lose it until he finally yeah. went berserk and just started like cramming whole boxes yeah. of it down his gullet. Is he the only mascot? Well, so far we've talked about what the booberry, or did we yeah. talk about? I missed that. No, that's I missed the, the one. first one. Just the the one. Yeah. Uh, a lot of like dead animals, you know. Boo Berry's a ghost. The cuckoo yeah. bird, he's gone. What's a Frankenberry must be sewn together from dead criminals who loved cereal. Or yeah, something like that. right. Uh, we have very more. grim. Count yeah. Chocula's kind of undead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, so let's go on, uh, Jeff. What's your second choice? Uh, I, I, you know, I, my second choice would be Frankenberry. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, is it be? Did you meet all these guys as a whole together, or do you remember Booberry first and then Frankenberry? Just by association, you got to got to like him. Well, uh, uh, Frankenberry and Count Chocula came first, um, so I oh, was probably okay. yeah, uh, I think a year or two before Booberry came out. So I think I was probably eating uh, those crunchy bits and marbits, uh, yeah. Frankenberry and Count Chocula first. I think I, I really liked Count Chocula first. Mm-hmm. But then I really, you know, developed yeah. a taste, a, a palate, if yeah. you will, for yeah. cereal. Are you um, someone who, like, w- once they get kind of re-released every Halloween, or do you just, like, do you go crazy for it? Like Sonny. Like Cuckoo. <laughs> <laughs> me, me and my cereal collector friends all are like, eh, I guess it's not that big of a deal. But then we all fill up carts full yeah. of them and say. <laughs> they do still sell Booberry and certainly Count Chocula during the year. Yeah, there's one more that they, I think they do. Um, Frankenberry. And Frankenberry. That's yeah. right. There's Frankenberry. The, the I remember thing. a few years ago, uh, uh, Jim Lee, who's a comic book artist, did like the redesigns for like the three or four characters of right. the four uh, that came out, what, like kind of probably 2014, 15, something like that. I remember that being very like, oh, this was like one of my favorite comic book artists, like taking a stab at redrawing these very classic uh, yeah, serial, 2014. serial monsters. 2014. 2014. Got them right here. And then in, I think 2013, maybe, maybe the year before, they used the old images um, of the boxes from the 70s. And that was a big darn deal for yeah. me and my buddies. Do you remember in like the those. 40s when they had Van Gogh? Yeah, Vincent. Came out and he did... Van Gogh. Yeah. <laughs> he did all this, the serial monsters, too. All the Impressionists. So uh-huh. He took a stab at it. He took a Toulouse Lautrec. He did a bunch of them. Well, the know. Dada is serial characters. <laughs> yeah. Just never worked it out. It never worked out. Uh, so I, I'm fascinated with these monsters because it also kind of what maybe we brought up before you arrived is uh, mm. um, those those pivot off into, for me, some of the other characters pivot off into just a general idea like a cartoon character. Um, but those things pivot off into the monster world of monsters and things like that. And, and for me, the Frankenstein was the most, I had the 
biggest nightmares about Frankenstein as a kid. And uh, that f- the friendly, I never bought Frankenberry as this friendly guy. I know he was just bound to snap and, and just crush somebody, crush a child <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Well, he doesn't know his own strength. No, no, he doesn't. Yeah. And you get him hopped up on sugar. It's yeah. just a bad yeah. combination. And unless you know somebody who plays violin or somebody who's exactly. kind of calm him. <laughs> Down. And who does Frankenstein kill? A kid. A kid, yeah. Uh, okay, so what's your second? I should say Frankenstein's monster kills yeah, the kid, yeah. not Frankenstein. Don't, uh, don't at me. Uh, our second choice is uh, the Trix Rabbit. Oh, wow. Who I'm actually sitting here not realizing if his name is Trix or if he's just the Trix he's Rabbit. He's the Trix Rabbit. Okay, he doesn't yeah. have a name. Oh, God, how, talk about someone who's been drive, driven insane just to be nameless. Oh, yeah. And just... To be named after, essentially, after the thing that you Great. cannot have. Yeah. What a, what a life. <laughs> so sad. It's yeah. like, it's like the, it's almost like the reverse negative of Sonny the Cuckoo Bird. Mm-hmm. He is, because he never gets what he wants. I think His entire thing is, is just trying to get some trick cereal, and the kid's just... Silly s- rabbit. Silly yeah. rabbit. Yeah. Can you imagine your entire life just being tempted? Just also, I assume, getting paid for... Uh, advertising the cereal and to yeah. never have it. Yeah, and and he, speaking of cartoon character or uh, cereal character mascots are going to snap someday. Yeah, and it's a six foot tall rabbit. I've seen Donnie Darko. <laughs> yeah, I know how this ends. <laughs> One of these days they're going to do silly rabbit tricks for mm-hmm. kids, and he's just going to call down a spoiler alert, big piece of a of a, a airplane just to uh, smash them so he can get his damn tricks. Is the March Hare in Lewis, uh, Lewis Carroll, like this, these rabbits are, I think, depicted as having erratic behavior mm. due to their, the mating habits in, in the spring. I think that's yeah. why rabbits are, are, are particularly frisky. Do you think the Trix rabbit was expecting something else other than cereal? Is that what was making him kind of... Well, you're saying that's why they call it Trix? Trix. Uh, So we, I guess, are at our halftime right now, but I want to say that decorating the table uh, are some very updated cereal mascots. The honeycomb uh, cereal, when I was a kid, had a a, a roller derby um, skater was one of their mascots. Oh, really? And there was like another guy who was like a kind of a lumberjack who was like one of their mascots. But today... It's the Big Show from WWE. It's a little little taste of the Big Show in yeah. every bite. Yeah. And he's reaching out on the cover. He's reaching out like he wants to put you in a sleeper hold or something like that. He's not smiling. Or I guess he's smirking a little bit. Well, I think that's a play off of the classic uh, Honeycombs commercial from the 80s with Andre the Giant. Oh, oh, it is it really? Where he comes. Is it Andre the Giant where he comes like bursting through? I think it is. Is it? Okay. I don't I'm know, almost either, positive Either, either it that is. or it's the Kool-Aid man. I yeah. don't know. And on the back, though, he's smiling while threatening to punch you. So, or that woman. Hey, kids. Yeah. Or, or, that. or, or Becky Lynch, WWE superstar yeah. Becky Lynch. So these are the serial mascots that we have today. Um, the floundering WWE and its um, um, some of its star people there. Listen, uh, it, yeah. they're just waiting for that XFL money to come rolling yeah. in yeah. to help uh, bolster their... Yeah. Uh, McMahon's <laughs> other enterprises. <laughs> yep, there it is. Andre the Giant. I was right. Is it really? Yep. yep. Oh, yep. Wow. So I think it's just sort of a, he's the new Andre the Giant. He's the new Andre. Kind of lame Andre the Giant. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, since we're at our halftime, I want to remind you to join us on our social media handles out on Instagram, out on Twitter, and of course, Facebook. That's the place where a lot of people su- have suggested new episode topics or uh, have given us another point of view on topics that we have already discussed. So, join us out on Facebook. Also, uh, monthly, we're doing our live shows. Yeah. Yeah. You won't be able to uh, make it to the next live show because, uh, or our, our, our live or we podcast. recently. Because it will have been recorded yeah. today, unless today. you go back in time. We did one on so National Pizza thing. Day <laughs> and suggest a future live show topics. Uh, and if you want to guest, we have we had guest Steve Delinsky of Pizza City USA on our uh, February 9th live show for National Pizza Day. He was great. He was great. We think. <laughs> we think. Also in March, check us out for our... Um, uh, s- Murdering of the Caesars Ides of March podcast where we cover any type of Caesar that's been murdered. Like a salad? Like if I'm just really hungry, I just murder it. Murder Caesar's all. Or uh, maybe we do National Pie Day in there. I forget what we do. Uh, so so we are back. Yeah. And we are going to go again to our guest who is actually very knowledgeable about uh, cereal mascots and uh, cereal premiums and things like that and ask him what his third 
choices? Uh, that would be Boss Moss from okay. the Freakies serial. Wow, that's a deep cut. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. B- b- edge of Makeda, on what Freakies are and who Boss Moss is. And- uh, so Ralston, uh, I think yeah. they did a lot of uh, dog, dog food. Dog food, yeah. The yeah. checkerboard brand, yeah. 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 Um, they put out a cereal called Freakies, um, and they were... Um, you know, kind of cute monsters that lived in a tree. Oh. And they never miss a meal because they love their Siri eel. Ooh. That's really, that's the jingle, <laughs> believe it or not. Was one of them an actual eel? <laughs> uh, and they had uh, crazy characters. Uh, goody Goody was just as she sounds. and uh, But Boss Moss was the boss, and that's why I, uh, he resonated with me when, when I was a kid. Yeah. So, yeah. It was Boss Ness in the, the yes, the prequels. only two, the only two good bosses that have ever existed, <laughs> Boss Moss and Boss Ness. Yeah, Springsteen. We won't even include him in this discussion. And Ralston. and and the uh, Animal Planet show Pit Boss. Yeah, that's it. Ralston was, and I, I remembered this, and I went and looked it up. They were really well known for having really random tie-in cereals. Like I remember this growing up that if you saw like a really bizarre cereal tie-in. It was probably Ralston. For example, Prince of Thieves. They had a Prince of Thieves cereal. Oh, you got to get that Prince of Thieves. Rainbow, money. Yeah, Rainbow Bright. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tr- Urkel O's from Family Matters. Is that right? Uh, they had the Bill and Ted cereal. Wow. Uh, Batman and Batman Returns oh. cereals. So yeah, they were they were definitely on the fringes of of I, your cereal mascot my guess is, world. Is all of those cereals tasted the same? They just they just compacted the cereal into a very specific shape and had marshmallow, just the same. They were all made out of flavor. checks, basically. Yeah. yeah. What was the um, Freaky's flavor? I've never heard of this one. It, uh, I, you know, it's it's kind of vague and indefinite in my mind. I think it's more <laughs> uh, uh, C- Captain Crunch, sort of. Uh-huh. Yeah. Just uh, general corn, corn, sugary. corn, sugar uh-huh. based. Um, yeah. Yeah. What hmm. were the other? Oh, uh, could you describe the character? Like, if it was like a style of animation, was it kind of like Ralph Bakshi, globby, googly kind of yeah, thing? Yeah, you're right. Uh, and you know, and Boss Moss looked kind of like a uh, a toad. Uh, if, mm-hmm. if a toad were like a, a handsome game show host from the '70s oh, fun. or something like that, <laughs> um, but and, and as very self assured. Mm-hmm. Boss Moss was very self assured. Um, and the animator who did that was a woman. Her name was Jackie End. Oh, wow. And that was very uncommon. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's about all she did as far as serial mascots. Mm-hmm. The, are the, I'm holding this up because this is great, great podcast content. Yeah, but they're there. They're there they are. Yeah. Um, they, hmm, I'm trying to think how you would describe those. They look sort of like what you, like anamorphic. If you sneezed on a screen. S- yes, and that's what I was going for, anamorphic <laughs> germs sort of a little bit. It was interesting that you mentioned um, that one of them, what was the, the female one. Goody, goody. Goody, goody. Yeah. We were, when we were looking up what we were going to choose, I couldn't find any female uh, cereal mascots. They're all. No, we don't know if, if tr- the Trick's Rabbit may oh, be yeah. female. I guess, I guess Sunny in theory could be too. I mean, they may be gender neutral. We don't yes. know. But, uh, you know, just specifically looking for like, oh, what is a girl cereal mascot, so to speak? And I just couldn't find anyone, that, especially like the top the most well-known ones, just, not, just none of them jumped out. Yeah, I can't think of one. There was uh, often a young lady on the cover, or in the box, the front of the box of uh, Honeycombs, oh. wearing a denim hat. Mm-hmm. And she she was on, I think, several boxes. Was she the roller derby gal that I was... I don't think it was. I think it was. Oh, they seem so. Ad. Okay. Um, and it was a it was a photograph rather than a drawing. Jeff, you seem a little obsessed with this I, roller oh, yeah. derby well, was, girl that was on the cover. Such of... a tall, powerful woman she could probably pick me up and do whatever she wanted to. <laughs> it was the Raisin Bran Sun. Do we do you think that might be female? No, if it was a moon. Oh, okay. Oh. The moon, the more feminine of the, yes, um, of, of, the of your s- solar s- solar uh, and uh, yeah, balls of things. Okay, your there. third. Our third one, um, and I'll let Michael talk about this one because I think he, he he's the one who discovered this. Uh, Big Mix. Yes. Whoa. Which was in 1990, mm. uh, uh, Kellogg's put out a cereal called Big Mix, which was like, just as it sounds, a mix of wheat, 
and oat and rice cereal, and you can get it with or without raisins. Yeah. And their mascot, Big Mix himself, was this combination moose, wolf, pig, <laughs> and chicken. There's a – Jeff's uh, – We will post this on, on the – Oh, wow. And the idea was that you, you are – if you are as hungry as a pig or hungry as a wolf – or hungry as a chicken. A moose. Or I yeah. guess they threw moose in there because they wanted to put antlers. Uh, this is the cereal for you when you can't decide on what flavors you want. <laughs> and also you can't decide on what the mascot is going to look like. What, did, what time frame was this? 1990. Wow. And it only existed for maybe two years. It's the island of Dr. Moreau yeah. <laughs> of cereal mascots. <laughs> this thing was, by the end of its two years, it was begging to be killed. Just yeah. put, put, put us. <laughs> Yeah, that was weird when the uh, Put cartoons a spork through me and end <laughs> and end my miserable existence. Either make Big Mix a mate or <laughs> let Big Mix die. <laughs> and it's basically kind of like this Sasquatch type character mm-hmm. that lives in specifically Yakima, Oregon. Wow. That comes out to eat this type of crazy cereal that's all over the place. Wow. And if you are the type of kid that wants doesn't know what they want, mm-hmm. this is the cereal. As what? if the mascot weren't enough. Uh, big mix is spelled with two G's and two X's. Well, yeah. it's the nineties. It, it was more extreme. extreme exactly. <laughs> yeah. Who was the, 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 this could have gone into who's the ad wizard who came up with this. This must've been just like they had extra everything. They had extra of everything. What do we, what do we got? We got surplus raisins and yeah. we got surplus of this and that. I don't know what to do with it. Throw it all together. That's what happens when you let the CFO be in charge of a, <laughs> a cereal for a day. Do you feel like that was in the era of novelty, things like the McDLT or something that, that nobody ever thought was going to be around for a while? Yet, here Maybe so. yet, yeah. yet we still clamor for the McRib yeah. once a year. It's oh, McRib yeah. season or yeah. shamrock shake time or pumpkin spice. But yet nobody's clamoring for Big Mix to come back. Yeah. That's poor a shame. Big, poor Big Mix. Yeah. I think we also wanted to have um, to talk about a, a mascot that had been effectively retired, that had his time in the sun, and I guess lurched back off to mm-hmm. the undergrowth of <laughs> to Yakima, the Washington. Cave that he crawled out of, yeah. Uh, this, this does bring to mind a retired serial mascot's uh, home somewhere where they all, <laughs> in their dotage, they, uh, they live out the rest of their lives. Uh, okay, uh, Myrie, what's your fourth and final? Kaboom, the Kaboom Clown. Oh, this is okay. This is a good wow. one. Um, I, I have mixed feelings about the Kaboom okay. Clown. <laughs> like, like Pogo uh, uh, the, uh Because the cereal is a, it has, the cereal itself um, is like a bland Cheerios. There's like, there's no sweetness <laughs> How do you whatsoever. Bland Cheerios. Yeah. No one, no one can see it on the podcast, but the everything went dark like a, a one room theater, and just a single spotlight shone down on Jeff just now. Just to, he's there alone in, in hello his, in his thoughts. My name is Ralph Nader. I'm the spokesman for Kaboom. <laughs> oh, you got a clown? Okay, all right, I'll I'll go. What what uh, what does the Kaboom clown look like? You're kind of typical circus clown. It's very very typical. Quentin Tarantino used that in Kill Bill. I think uh, a weapon mm. was pulled out of a Kaboom cereal box. Oh, wow. As a little sight gag there. That's funny. That's uh, I assume that it was made just for the movie. I didn't realize it. I guess I guess knowing Quentin Tarantino. You thought it was like a big kahunas type thing where he just made up a brand yeah, for the... Yeah, but knowing his kind of you know nostalgia, I guess, for him to be like, oh, this is probably a cereal from the 70s mm-hmm. or something, that does fall into place on, on almost two fronts. It could have been a sight gag, as you said, but then also... You know his nostalgia that he can't let go of. It's not a fake thing like QT invents these fake. Things. Yeah, I guess not. Okay, I thought it was, but I guess not. Okay. So, what about the Kaboom Clown is intriguing to you, other than the fact that he's kind of he's he's not quite John Wayne Gacy scary, no, but he, there's uh, something going on there. You know, I, I I don't know when you know I'm I'm 52 and uh, I don't know when that when I was a kid. People were scared of clowns. That wasn't. I don't know that that was uh, like little little kids were scared of clowns. So I I gravitated to huh. clowns and monsters. Yeah. And uh, and and again, I don't even remember a commercial, a Kaboom commercial or anything like that. But I just really love the eye popping colors mm-hmm. and the, um, and then he smiled at me from yeah. the cereal box. That's true. Okay. Uh, those residents or denizens of the valley probably 
think he might be similar to the circus lickers clown who <laughs> yes <laughs> all right dudes what's your final choice all right our final one and um this may be a little controversial i don't know hot take as michael told me hot take yeah hot cereal quaker oats the quaker oats guy oh wow oh, yeah. um it goes by the name of larry I, I learned this, by the way, that they started calling him Larry, which does not sound like a very Quaker <laughs> name, like Jebediah or something like that. Larry. Yeah. What? Uh, were you legit? He's Larry? Yeah. yeah. What, At one point, they started calling him Larry after they did a rebrand on him about five years ago and dropped about oh. five, 10 pounds off of his face to try and make him look like he had an active, healthy lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, is which like- is interesting because uh, this, I know why Michael brought this one up. Is this is kind of what you look like if you eat oats every day? <laughs> okay. You eventually you eventually turn into this man, and your hair goes white. <laughs> your all the all the blood comes out of your your face, yeah. and your you eventually look like William Penn. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, well, guys, I'm going to make quick work of this judging because uh, we, we you guys tried to take on an expert in cereal, and let's say I would just say. Um, you you look like the clowns. You look like the clowns here. You look like Kaboom. Uh, <laughs> our, our choices went Kaboom, yeah. but not in a good way. Yeah. I thought it was really, uh, really interesting, the um, pointing out addiction and mental illness as being marketing aspects, <laughs> and then the schizophrenia that Big Mix must feel at any point, like his sense of uh, search, his search for identity and the challenges that he has. So those are very compelling. Uh, but you can't beat Booberry. I don't think you can really go up against Frankenberry and Boss Nass. That's a super cool. I'd never even heard of the freaky Boss Moss. Here. Boss Moss. Boss Nass. You're still stuck <laughs> in. Ep- you're still stuck in episode one. I you totally fool. Am. I totally am. That's M O S S. M O M A S. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. And kaboom, uh, the clown. So uh, Jeff Meyer, you are the winner of this special Mount Rushmore uh, of cereal mascots. Congratulations. Oh, thank you very much, Richard. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't eat his. Quaker Oats this morning. I know. Somebody's a little cranky, huh? (laughs) Uh, So this has been the Mount Rushmore of Cereal Premiums. want to thank uh, Jeff Myrie for being our guest today. Uh, um, We'll talk to you guys soon. I'm Jeff. I'm Richard. I'm Michael. 